Hey, it's Bridget. Hi, welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. Coming to you from the greenhouse room where it is raining. So you might hear it in the background. I'm not sure how the sound quality will be, but if that's what you hear, that's what, if you're noticing something in the background, that's what you're hearing. Okay, I'm just gonna let you know that. All right, so today we are going to, since I wore my United Kingdom shirt, yeah, um, I decided in my morning live stream on Bridget Inspired on Instagram, I have an Instagram and a Facebook page called Bridget Inspired. And today I did a live stream and I talked about who should I channel? I feel like channeling and I'm like, Princess Diana, Lady Diana, I have not channeled her for a while. I usually like to channel her kind of May-ish, springtime-ish. Um, like she seems like a Mother's Day kind of channel. So I don't think I'm gonna wait that long to channel her. I think right now I'm gonna channel her because there's some things going on. So I'm recording this on March 22nd, 2022. And there's been some, some stuff, probably people are starting to become aware. Obviously the queen is, Queen Elizabeth is quite in her um, elder years, let's say. <laughs> she's she's um, definitely aging and has been missing several um, events and public things, which isn't like her because just she's feeling it, I think. The effects of aging, which is a natural process for everyone, unless of course you're dead. And then if you die young, then I guess, uh, that's a thing. And I guess you don't experience that. However, I thought it would be a good idea to have conversation with uh, Lady Diana, because it feels like um, I like talking to her, number one. Number two, she's filled with love. It's beautiful and unconditional. And number three, the stuff with the queen, I don't know. I mean, I think there's definitely a sense of um, awareness that transition will be coming soon from the monarchy as it has been as it has been for many 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 decades and into a new reality which lots of parts of the world are experiencing transitions with leadership and the people and there's a lot of um separatist energy and so let's have a conversation with princess diana i'm going to use that the words interchangeably if you are in the uk and you have very strong feelings just know that those are your strong feelings. And I respect how you wish for Diana to be addressed. And I will use the words interchangeably. It's not out of any kind of disrespect. It's just because I just use the titles interchangeably. And she's more than just her title. Obviously, she is transcendent, isn't she now? All right. Come on in, unconditional love. As part of the conversation here. This is the reason why we're connecting today. She says, unconditional love, Bridget, unconditional love. Yeah, I feel the pink energy, I'm wearing pink. I feel that loving, compassionate energy that you bring through all the time. Very blue eyes, <laughs> the blue, the blue and the pink is the balancing energy. She says, it's a reference point for you to notice. It's the reference of the center point. She says, many people are looking for stability. We are seeking a sense of normalcy that has been lost. The only way that one can gain that or feel some kind of regaining of a normal way of life or living is to claim the sovereignty that has been gifted to you through this experience. The experiences you've had, whether it be personal in your own families or with the public as a whole, so like collectively, she's saying, it has changed you. It has changed all of you. The perspective of change can be something that is extremely difficult, very harsh. The word that comes through is gritty, like really gritty, like rough. And she says, it's not just a, a simple, process of smoothing out the edges. It's, a, it's, a, it's what is needed now for humanity is an acknowledgement of the depth of the pain that has been shared. Because there is a depth, a deepening of pain that individuals like yourself are 
coming into realization of and making it very, very personal. And the personalization of pain is what is allowing for the realization and the desire, which will create the momentum for overarching change in the world globally, not just within a community, a state, a country, or a continent, but globally, collectively. This is why you will see a continued increase and rise and concern over the environment, over the natural effects of things, of humanity. It seems as though the elements, like she's showing me like floods and fires and, and winds and things like storms and natural disaster kinds of things. Mudslides, she's showing, she's specifically acknowledging mudslide. I'm not sure why that is, if that means something to a country that she really loves. Then she says the word, she literally says country, like I literally hear the word Kenya. I don't know why. I also see or hear the word Botswana. Tangiers or Tanzania, I, a lot of, a lot of, okay. She says, um, mother nature is not furious. It's not the wrath of nature that you are receiving. It is the recognition of the internal turmoil that has been happening and the battles and the fights, the wars that have been tearing countries and families apart for decades that are around commerce and money. The illusion that money must be gathered and collected into one place in the hands of a few who are righteous enough or intelligent enough strategic enough to be able to be planful for the future and future generations. This is an illusion. This is not true. There are many in these times that will recognize the incredible healing properties of the land and will do things like grow organic foods and share food with their neighbors and find ways to provide medical care in exchange for the food that they've grown, to look to natural ways to support the human body and the growth of what is needed for future generations will be far less preservative-like than it has been. There will be a correction. So she's talking about health, she's talking about environment, environment, natural disaster stuff. Um, it's not like an act of God is what she's like trying to say, I think. That's how it feels. It's a universal shifting of our consciousness, just being aware of those things. Those things have always happened, but now it feels far more meaningful because of what we've been through, the collective pain that we've endured. Can you talk a little bit about comparison? Such as like a third world country versus a first world country, et cetera. Can you talk a little bit about that? How that feeds in or how that, how that provides context? What you see outside your front door has a great deal of immediate impact on you. The fact that the intranet, intranet, she says intranet, intranet, the intranet has provided a way to connect to allow more things to be visible, which encourages the sharing of information. But it can also be something that causes a great deal of, for the empaths, she's showing the heart, the empathy, it can be a great deal of, of shared trauma because of that. You don't have to physically be somewhere to feel the pain of the place when you're watching something. It's very visual. She's showing me very visual imagery, very graphic imagery of wars, of of pain, of suffering, of things happening. And that while those images are real, while those things are happening, 
some of the sensationalized, our emotions are sensationalized. They're very valid and very justified, yet they are perhaps um, triggered by an image or a, a particular image. This feeds into why you can under how you can understand how people can get caught up into conspiracy theories because they're trying to simply find a meaning. And it is too harsh or too traumatic for some to, to realize or even try to begin to believe or understand because there's no understanding in such trauma and tragedy like genocide. for example. So it is easy for people to get caught up in a conspiracy, um, the energetics of that, when that is not the truth either. So the truth really is, comparatively speaking, someplace in between the extremes, which is what we gravitate toward, the center point, your heart knows. The energy of anxiety or fear only fuels the need to grab on to a specific definition or understanding that is presented by somebody else when the truth is within you is what you know. It is how you, your lens to the, your, your lookout to the world will create for you within you an everlasting thread for those who come after you to tap in and understand through that framework, that lookout point. Which allows for values to be planted. The seeds of values are being gathered now for planting. It is easy to get caught up in the historic past and to want to blame or scapegoat large corporations or people with a lot of power, perceived power, money, corporations, businesses, but there's not, it is not all good and it is not all bad. The truth is in between that. It is true there are wars. It is true there are children that are dying. It is true that there are people abused and trafficked. It is true that there are a few, perhaps many, who take advantage of those who are lesser off than they are. This is true. It is a natural human trait and tendency. And now that we are opening our eyes and our hearts to feeling the collective pain of others, we can more closely identify those children who are suffering, those families who are suffering through our own lensing of our own suffering because we feel it, it's empathic. That's how she's sharing you guys, right? She's very personifying it, making it very inside, inside. The point of all of this isn't to promote a gratitude for what you have and to hold that really close then and to be afraid of the loss of it, but to acknowledge that loss is a part of the process of sifting out, um, of shifting and creating change that is positive. Eventually, the work of others will create a pathway or a passage into a more robust time of camaraderie and compassion. The pain that is being connected to now, if it's not directly impacting you, you are connected to it and it will come out in many ways, such as through addictions, abusive patterns, fear mentalities where you hoard things, including rights, you will see a crackdown or a restriction of rights because of the fear of the change that is naturally occurring. And you'll see this in all the countries. She says, all of the countries. 
and some will rally around those who are trying to seemingly protect the values, the rights. And yet what is happening is sort of a hoarding of or separating of who receives and who does not, who is worthy and who is not when collectively the pain is impacting everyone, even those who are acting as though they are separate from the pain or so high up on the social ladder that they are protected in their, their huge houses and their walls and their servants and having their food farmed in their backyard and made by their chefs, etc., who have the money to access the best doctors and yet, that isolation, that separatist protective wall, it is a wall of pain and a shield of pain and fear. These things I know are natural, they're deep, and they're very personal to you. It will be time for change very soon. She's showing me a lot of orange, which is like a desire for change, but at the same time, it's gonna burn. She says, there will be gro growth pains. You've already felt that, she says, in your personal life. And there is a growing admiration and appreciation for those who are in service through the heart, through the love and the unconditional love, through compassion, through their service, the kind hearted, of which there are many. They truly are the majority. And when you are being mobilized to do something, fight for something or against something, trying to stop that moving train, recognize within yourself that you can promote through your own heart space, pure, untainted, unconditional, love, compassion, and kindness. And you can do so now by starting within you. Places where you have felt bitter, angry, or perhaps you've been, you've suffered a deep personal loss, a loved one, a family member. You have the time now to repair what has been interpreted. as a devastating blow to you personally, you can repair through the channels of kindness, compassion, and love to understand that all people have suffered such loss. And the only way to heal that pain is within yourself through the kindness that you show to yourself by softening the harsh. It's like brutal, she's showing me like brutal thoughts, angry, revenge, vengeful, revenge-like thoughts. The pain is used to manipulate and control. But when you can lean into the healing attributes of love, the love you had that created the loss, the love is what is true.
And that is what will heal you and your loved ones and your countries and the world. And it's very, very personal. And it will take time and change. Change is already happening. It has been happening over the course of the last two years. Dramatic change. What can you do with this knowledge and wisdom that you have gained through your personal experience of pain, through the connection of the empathic heart to the suffering of others? What will you do with this wisdom in this time? deep you guys this is really deep like I literally feel the I literally feel the impact of what she's feeling it feels like a collective sorrow I made some rose water Diana I made some rose water that spray I made it into a spray I'd like to use this now for everyone to feel the energy of just this pure love and the kindness. And breathing that in, imagining what a rose smells like for you all. Nice deep breath in. Beautiful exhale out. Shunka. Shunka means release. One of my mentors, release, shunka, let go, let go, shunka. Give it back to the earth, the pain. To be able to till the soil and compost when it's no longer needed so we can collectively rebuild and move ahead so we can create our future. Did not expect that from Princess Diana. Times they are a changing and it's not all bad. It doesn't have to be bad, you guys. It does not have to be bad. Okay, it does not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It does not have to be bad. I see big, pink roses for her and yellow. Actually, I see both yellow and pink. Pink, compassionate, very beautiful, feminine beauty, imbuing beauty. And the yellow ones are like solar plexus, spirit. Like bright yellow, like this, like this yellow, bright yellow, spirit. That's intuition, that's purpose, that's meaning. Pay attention to your heart. That's what gives meaning to life, this life right now. Wow, that was really deep. Okay, everybody, this is Bridget. It's been an intense, impactful, powerful session here with Princess Diana. I hope that we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope, encouraged you to live your life. This is your life after all, and you get to live it just Love it. Thanks for watching.